Efficiency ratios. <clears throat> this presentation will look at the concept of efficiency ratios. It will look at what is meant by the different efficiency ratios, how they are calculated, and also how they can be used to make decisions when looking at accounts. Let's start by looking at what is meant by the term efficiency ratios. Well, these are ratios that allow an assessment to be made on the efficiency of an organisation. A typical exam tip would be that in the exam, you tend to find the keyword efficiency being mentioned. If you see that, then you'll need to use one of these three ratios that we're going to learn. So, we will learn all about the trade receivable days, the trade payable days, and inventory turnover. The way to think about it simply is the term receivable means money that you're due to receive. So there are people who are in your debtors file, they have a debt to you. And trade payable days are people we need to pay, so they are creditors, people who we have to pay, and they've been on creditors file. Inventory turnover, as is pretty straightforward, inventory is another term for stock. These are all ratios that you need to learn. Let's look at the first one, trade receivable days. Trade receivable days is calculated using the formula trade receivables divided by credit sales times 365. That's because there's 365 days in a year. This ratio shows how long on average people in the organisation who owe us money and have been given credit will take to pay. So these are our customers, people we've given credit to. How many days does it typically take them to pay? Ideally, we're looking for a shorter figure. That's because it tends to show that the organisation is better at getting the money in that it's owed. And obviously, getting debts paid quickly means there's more of a chance of it being paid in full and no bad debts being incurred. Of course, the way to use this figure is to compare it to the standard credit terms that are given. So, for example, 30 days tends to be average. So you'd be looking at that result and comparing it to 30 days. A really efficient business would obviously be maybe 29, 28 days. A really poor business could be something like 140 days rather than the 30 days. But it all does depend on the amount of time that you give customers to pay back who've been given credit. As you can see on the screen, here is a question. I'd like you to try and calculate the trade receivable days. Pause the video now while you do that. As you can see, this is the answer that you should have got. You should have taken your trade receivables of 400,000 and divided it by your 1.6 million of credit sales, times it by 365, and you'll get 91.25. Now, you can't really have 0.25 a day, so we'll say 92 days, round it to the nearest whole day. So it takes 92 days on average in this business for the customers to pay. If they were given 30 days credit, then that's not very good. We need to be considering that. Maybe if they're given 90 days credit, it's not too bad because they're actually paying as close to as they probably could do realistically. We could get it down a little bit more then. Now, the opposite of a trade receivable is trade payable days. This formula works out how long on average it takes an organisation to pay the people who are given it credit. So, the suppliers, in other words. And this is what's sometimes known as creditors or the creditors file. Now, this is calculated using trade payables divided by credit purchases times 365 to work out again in days. Now, this figure is believed should be a greater amount than your receivable days because ideally it shows that you're holding the money in your business for as long as possible. Of course, really, this, if you want to be efficient, you'll pay on the set terms that you've got. So if you're given 30 days, you'll pay on 30 days. If you pay earlier, it could be a sign that your business isn't holding on to the money for as long as possible. That money could be getting greater rewards, for example, if it's placed in a bank account. Of course, taking a long time could possibly damage your relationship with your supplier, and that does need to be factored in and considered. As you can see on your screen, you've now got a question. I'd like to try and answer that question and pause the video while you do just that. Okay, here is the answer. So your trade payables are £150,000. You divide that by £1 million and then times it by 365 days 
and that gives you 54.75 or again rounded to nearest day 55 days so this business is paying in 55 days if we were talking about here an example where they were given 60 days well they're paying before the time is up again could be argued that they're efficient and they're really have no positive relationship with their supplier because they're paying them early or it could be deemed that actually they're not holding on to the money for as long as they possibly could which could actually get a better return and reward in their business that all depends on how you perceive it but again those days are shorter than what they're receiving their money so effectively if you want to think about it this way they are paying people after 55 days but they're receiving it after nearly 90 days we talked about in the previous example as a result of that, as you can see, that's bad for the business. That's going you know, to a strain on their cash flow forecast. You ideally always want your payable days to be longer than your receivable days. The final ratio that we're going to look at is inventory turnover. Inventory is a word for stock. Now, this ratio calculates how much stock is being sold over a period of time. So how quickly is stock being sold? In simple terms, a lower ratio is better. So, for example, let's say you get the answer 7. That means inventory is being sold on average every 7 days. Whereas, if you had a figure of 14, that means that inventory is being sold every 14 days. So, clearly, it's better to be selling your stock every 7 days than every 14 days. However, the answer to this ratio does also vary on what product you're selling. So, for example, if you're selling a luxury sports car, then you wouldn't sell as many of these maybe as a more standard car. And also, it does depend on whether the selling price is actually effective. And by that, I mean profitable. So you need to use this ratio and compare it to the gross profit ratio to ensure the organization is actually making a profit. It's easy to increase your inventory turnover by selling your items at a lower price, maybe even selling them at a loss and having a sale. These are factors that have to be considered. The way we calculate inventory turnover is average inventory divided by cost of sales times 365 for every single day. The way that we work out average inventory is the opening inventory plus the closing inventory divided by two. That's how we calculate it. It's really straightforward and simple when you get a head around it. Okay. As you can see on your screen, you now got a question. I'd like you to try and attempt to calculate the inventory turnover. Pause the video while you do that. Hopefully you've managed to complete this. Now what I've done first is use the bid mass example. So as you can see, I first take my opening inventory of 200,000. I've added it to my closing inventory of 500,000, which gives me 700,000, and then divide it by two, and I've calculated my average inventory. I then divide that by my cost of sales of 1 million. I multiply that by 365 and I'm left with 127.75 or realistically 128 days. So that figure of 128 days suggests that I turn over my inventory on 128 days. So what is that actually telling us? The calculations tend to only be useful if we can make an interpretation. And as I said already, it all depends on different factors. For example, trade receivables, how does that compare to what it should be? So for example, are we giving our customers 30 days credit? So if we give them 30 days credit and we actually get paid in 92 days, we're doing really, really badly. Because you think about that there, that's effectively two extra months that our customers are getting to pay. They could go bankrupt in that time and never pay us. We're not getting the cash in and we could put that in our bank and use it more effectively. Trade payable days. If, for example, let's say it was 60 days. Well, if it was 60 days to pay our suppliers and we're paying them in 55 days, we're not doing as well as we could do because we could hold on to that money for a bit longer until we've been asked for it. We could put that in the bank and we could utilise it. However, you could argue that we're paying them in advance, we're paying them early, we're going to have a great relationship with our suppliers and might be more willing to give us better terms or better trade terms, better deals. Again, you'd be looking at comparing that figure then with the cost of sales to see how is that impacted on the cost of sales that has been, or the cost or the operating cost of the business. Of course, the thing that should stand out straight away is that we are paying people in 55 days, but we're getting our cash in after 92 days. That's going to put a strain on our cash flow and our liquidity position. So we might want to look at our 
current ratio, for example, and compare it to that ratio. Inventory turnover, again, on its own, doesn't mean much. We need to compare that to our rivals. We don't know whether that's good or bad compared to our competitors and our rivals or compared to previous years. Also, we need to look at our profit margins if we're going to use that figure and make a decision because how does that compare to our profit margins when we think about how we're performing overall? If we're selling things cheaply and making a little profit, well, I'd expect our inventory turnover to go up. But as a result of that, I'd also want to know is it profitable in the long term for the business? Is it sustainable? What you'll now see on your screen is some financial data. You may want to pause the video now to look at that, or you can download it from the link that you'll find below in the video. And I would like you to try and calculate the three ratios you see there for year one and year two. When you've calculated them, then see if you can draw a conclusion to decide how the business is performing in the second year of trading, in your opinion. Pause the video or why you complete that task. There you go, the answers are now on screen. It'll probably be useful for you to compare your answers with a friend, especially about the long answer part where you've got to decide whether the business is performing better and maybe share your answers below in the comments box so that I can look over and see what you're thinking. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of the financial efficiency ratios, you understand which ratios can be used, how they can be calculated, and what they can tell you. More importantly, hopefully you're starting to see that these all connect together and making decisions can only be made really if you've got a wide range of financial data. Thanks for checking out the Bee Business B YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at B Business B. Also, give the Facebook page a like. It's facebook.com forward slash B Business B. And lastly, don't forget to check out the online hiver activities found on bbusinessb.co.uk full of quizzes, activities and resources. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing.